guys, Fixel here. Now in this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a directional movement in Game Maker Studio 2 using drag and drop. So I'm actually just going to first up, first off, open up my room. And this project was actually something I was working on, but then just deleted it because I didn't like it. So I have a couple things here that I'm going to change up. I'm going to change the width of my room to 640 and the height of my room to 40. So now I have this box for my room. So the first thing you want to do is go down to the sprites folder and right click. Go up to where it says create and go over and down to sprite. Now we want to rename the sprite to be S standing for sprite player. Now why do we want to have, have the S in front of the player? Well that's basically just to say that this is our sprite of our player. Because later on we'll be making an object for our player. And if we name them both player we might get confused on which one is which so we just want to establish that this one is the sprite of the player and uh later on the object is the object of the player okay so now i'm gonna go to my s player and i'm gonna go to edit image and now i'm gonna go down to this little bucket that says fill tool and you can really just fill this whatever you want i'm gonna fill it with uh pink because why not and now we want to go to our object and right click on those, go to create, go down to object, rename this one to O player, standing for object. And now let's assign this sprite where it says no sprite, click on that, go to the sprites folder and click on S player. So now let's go into our events here and add an event. Let's make this one a uh, go to key down and let's go to left. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to scroll down in this toolbox here. We want to scroll down to movement and we want to grab jump to point and drag that in. And don't worry about this Y here. We'll worry about that in a minute. Let's set the X to, wait a second. Let's set the X to equal negative five and tick the relative box on both of these. Uh, why we want to do that is because if we were not using the relative box, we would basically always be going to negative five, which is like w way out here, basically. And we don't want that. We don't want to keep jumping to that point. We want to make it so that it's going to negative five relative to what it's at currently. And so now we want to go to our events and add a new event. Let's make this one key down right. And let's do the same thing, except this time instead of putting negative five, we're gonna put five. Relative, relative. And now let's add a new event. Let's go down to key down and up. Now let me check something real quick. Okay, so we're subtracting if we're going upwards. So let's drag in our jump to point event here or um, sequence here and don't worry about the x on this one let's actually go to the y and make this one negative five relative and now let's add another new event let's go to key down uh down and let's drag in our jump to point and y let's do five relative relative so now let's go to our room here double click on our room uh it doesn't really matter what size your room is to be honest but Let's click on our O player object to make sure you have this instances layer selected. Let's drag it in here. You can put it wherever. So now, uh, this should work. Okay, so if we hold down right on the keyboard, as you can see, he moves to our right. If we hold down left on the keyboard, he moves to our left. If we hold down up on the keyboard, he moves up. And down is down. And now if we hold left and up, he moves diagonal up to the left and left and or right and up and down and right and down and left and if we do right and left at the same time it doesn't move and if we do um up and down at the same time it doesn't move so uh let's actually do collision now so let's go down to our sprites and let's create a new sprite once again by right clicking going up to create creating our sprite let's call this one s wall honestly it doesn't really matter what you call these images we're just calling them this because we want to. So now let's go to our objects and let's create a new object. Let's call this one O wall. And now let's set our sprite here to be S wall. 
Let's add. Actually, no, we don't want to add an event to that. Let's go to our O player. And let's add an event. Go down to collision and go to objects and select a wall. And now let's go to jump to point. Let's do zero, zero, relative, relative. So that should work. Oh, uh, I'm going to stop that. Let's go back to our room. There's one, th one thing I forgot to do. Um, let's drag in a wall. You don't have to drag, drag it in this many times. I'm just doing it because I feel like it. All right. So, oh, what happened there? Wow, okay, guys, so I'm stupid, and I forgot to set the O wall to solid, so go to your O wall object, and in this little thing here, take the solid box. I'm sorry, guys, I was just not thinking straight. It's freaking almost 12 o'clock in the morning. I'm super tired. All right. Here we go. Boom. So, now we have our collision with our object. So you can use this to like, I don't know, it, like, you could use this to make a little top-down scrolling game or whatever, if you wanted. Like an RPG game, maybe. A top-down RPG um, scrolling game. But yeah, anyways, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Hope you guys enjoyed, hope it helped you out, like, subscribe, whatever, and I'll see you in the next video, bye.